one only has to look at the platinum price uh, still on the front foot we're well above one thousand eight hundred dollars an ounce uh, but just looking at those anglo platinum uh, uh, numbers the trading update as i mentioned sevenfold Let's delve deeper into that number. Firstly, it is coming uh, off a relatively low base. And of course, there were one uh, once off items that were relatively exceptional, which resulted in profits as well, which perhaps is elevating that uh, headline earnings per share number. Yeah, no, um, yeah, I thought I thought the numbers were slightly disappointing. Um, I think if you strip out those once off items that you mentioned and you um, look at the numbers on uh, from an operational perspective, the numbers weren't great. Um, I think you know there's a couple of, of, of contributing factors. The first is, is, is still the cost side, which they're struggling to get right. They see it seems like they have some issues on the geological side, um, struggling to get at right on three of their mi main mining assets. Um, and you know I think um, the, the 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 dollar price, uh, platinum price, is is above 1,800. The rand is relatively strong, but but the main problem um, I would say in these numbers is is cost. Mm. And of course, this, that goes for most of the, the uh, platinum sector as well. It is a very costly business. Uh, when you look at Anglo Platinum, we chatted a little earlier, you're talking about a cost per ounce of 11,700 Rand an ounce and, and relatively high costs. We know that labor costs are also one of those big issues and it seems electricity costs will probably go up even more going forward with what we hear uh, from uh, the investor community as well. Uh, based on that premise, would you be buying Anglo Platinum? Yeah, look, it's, it's, it's definitely not our preferred pick um, in the sector. Um, they sit fairly high on the cost curve and um, you know in the absence of, of, of a massive s s uh, platinum price or a PGM basket price in, in, in rands um, we would would rather stay with with the lower risk uh, sort of better growth uh, quality uh, uh, platinum but assets. Anglo Platinum has a fantastic set of assets uh, and this is what really um, sets them apart from the other platinum players in South Africa. Do you think that they could get costs and yeah, yeah, I mean the premium that's been given to them in the past has been, has been substantial uh, because of, of, of the so-called superior asset base. Mm -hmm. um, but I think what we're seeing of late and what, what's coming through in the numbers is um, is, is asking a, a question whether they deserve that premium, I would say. Um, and, you know, it, it all depends on what they can utilize um, in the next couple of years. You know, their free cash flow at the moment is under pressure um, to get it into positive territory. It, it's likely to affect their capex in, 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 in FY11. Um, so, you know, it all just depends on, on what base they are currently put at and, 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 and where they actually should be. Well, let's play out the scenario. Uh, perhaps a slightly weaker rand and then platinum uh, breaching $2,000 an ounce. Would that perhaps uh, signal a better, uh, you know, future for Anglo Platinum? Yeah, look, they've got a much higher uh, operational gearing. Um, so, you know, if, 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 if the PGM basket price are going to move substantially higher, um, they will have a, a very strong positive effect on their, um, on their earnings, um, which could be very positive for the company. But, um, you know, looking at the basket uh, price at the moment, we are, we are very positive on palladium on the coming year, on, 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 on 2011. But, but platinum, there's a couple of, 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 of concerns and, and there is a risk that, that the market be, may, may be in de deficit, uh, maybe in a surplus this year again which obviously will create a bit of an issue when it comes to uh, you know, share price gains. What about the likes of Impala Platinum? It seems to be one of those preferred stocks, uh, but then again, it seems that we started to see a bit of a rotation out of Impala Platinum into Anglo Platinum. Would you be part of those changes? Yeah, look, I mean, uh, you know, Impala had a massive outperformance over Amplats in, in, in sort of uh, Q4 uh, 2010. Um, and I think what, you, what you're kind of seeing um, of late is, is, is that there's a lot of guys that's got a shorter term focus that is actually switching um, into Amplats. Uh, just, I guess, they, they, they're of the view that the, the relative performance was overdone. Um, but, you know, if you look at the longer term potential of the two companies, I would still put my money on Impala. Mm. The likes of Royal Buffer King, uh, you know, a stock that uh, has seen a bit of volatility since it launched uh, and it listed in the middle of December. Your view on this, would you be uh, going for a smaller platinum counter such as this one? Yeah, no, look, I mean, I, I would rather stay at, at the top, top tier or the tier one assets. Um, 
you know, Aubrey Platts, they, they don't have a bad asset base, um, but I think it's fully priced at current, at current levels. Um, you know, they, they are planning to, to apply mechanized mining um, on, on, on the new mine. And, um, you know, his, history has shown that that's a difficult, it's a difficult exercise to get right the first time. Um, I, th I think it is, uh, I don't want to say it's priced for per perfection, but it's, but it's got a lot in it already. Okay, looking at your stock picks, your mining stock picks uh, for the rest of the year, Xaro has been one of those favorites. We know you were talking about it towards the end of last year. Uh, what is your view on your, your stock picks for 2011, given the fact that we have seen uh, a nice price increase for most of these counters towards the end of last year, but the Resi 20 relatively outperforming uh, the underperforming rather the rest of the the indices perhaps the likes of the industrial 25 sector and definitely the financial 15. Yeah look I mean you know there's a there's a couple of, of stocks I think in the industrial index which is just shooting the lights yeah. out um, so I don't think it's it's, it's sort of a, a across the board theme. Um, my topics would still stay with, with those two. Um, I think Anglo's you know the assets that they got the diversifications that they got um, will stand in very well in the coming year. We're still very positive on copper, mm -hmm. um, <coughs> you know, platinum as well. Um, and I think, you know, you know, in terms of a relative price level where they are currently priced compared to the likes of Billiton uh, is, is, is probably offering better value. Exara still, we've seen the, what, what the coal price have done of late, um, various issues of, of flooding and, and, and shortages that, 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 that the guys are currently worried about. And, um, you know, we are expect, expecting that the price would remain firm um, across the board for, for, for a big part of this year.